Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper along with Tony Haggard. This is Global Wrestling News. Well, we brought you the Junior and Senior World Championships coverage, and now it's time for the cadets to hit the stage. This year's Cadet World Championships took place in historic Athens, Greece. The United States finished 3-for-3 to close out the cadets, and finished in second behind Russia. Defending world champ Kurt McHenry met up with Georgian world champ Gagashvili in the finals, and McHenry hit a slick whip over and go behind takedown to go up four early, and then caught Gagashvili getting lazy on the edge to push his lead to 6-0 at the break. The Georgian pulled within four in a late takedown and trapped arm gut wrench, but McHenry answered back with a four-point throw at the buzzer and won his second world gold 12-4. Tony, things got a little bit chippy, a little bit chirpy at the end. Yeah, I mean, this was this this is a um, <coughs> this is an opportunity here, I guess, for McHenry just to really kind of show him who's boss. I mean, he, the guy was really trying to twist his ankle there, his knee, really trying to hurt him. You could tell something was up. Right. And you know, he became the third American to win two Cadet World Championships. So I mean, he's got to he's got to have a little bit of swagger to him too. I mean, that's that's a historic feat for him. I think people are perhaps looking at it a little bit too closely as a cocky move. I don't think there's anything here. Nope. All right, let's move on. In their first international competition, Aaron Brooks and Daniel Kirkliet took home world titles at 76 and 100 kilos. Brooks was dominant in the opening period, hitting a four-point throw. A pair of takedowns and exposure to go up 12-3 against the cadet European champ, his opponent, Kostiev. Well, the Russian responded with back-to-back -back takedowns to pull within five, but Brooks went on the defense and held on for a 12-7 victory. This is an insane finish for Brooks. He came in here as an alternate to this team. Brooks uh, bursted on the scene after capturing the Greco and Freestyle you know, Fargo Championships this summer. So to see him come as an alternate, to come in here on the world stage to get it done, I don't think, I mean, I think people saw it coming, but to be an alternate, you know, he's the first alternate to probably do that. I mean, crazy to think how good Whitlake is if he beat him in the best of three. Bummer that he had an ankle injury, but clearly Brooks stood up and did what it took to be the world champ. Yeah, Whitlake and Brooks, you know, both ranked number one at their respective weights. Brooks could be something very special as he is going to be heading to the Olympic Training Center as soon as he gets graduating, so he's not going to the next level, at least not yet anyways, but he's saying he's going to OTC, so we'll, we'll see if that holds up. In the heavyweight finale, it was Kirk Fliet against the cadet European champ, Nirov. Kirk Fliet scored first on passivity, but a late first period pushout tied the score at one. The American continued to press the action in the second, drawing another passivity call to win the gold 2-1. Man, the Minnesota Gophers have a good one here. Dean is a two-time state champion from Minnesota. You know, I feel like he, going into this championship, he was a bit of unknown. So, you know, that's that was before winning the world championship. So, huge feat, going to put him on the map, already committed, so he's got nothing to worry about there. But now, I, now we know his name. I want to get him on takedown radio so I can practice saying his name because I have a feeling we're <laughs> going to be saying it a lot. Let's head back down to 69. That's where Illinois' Will Lewin picked up wins over India, Russia, Turkey, all to reach the gold medal round. That's where he faced Abragamov of Azerbaijan. Lewin scored the first points on a step out, but his opponent drew a passivity point with just a minute left. Down by criteria with five seconds left, Lewin kept pushing forward and made Abragamov make a mistake walking into his underhook, scoring with just five seconds left to win that world championship 3-1. Yeah, Will has just a heavy, heavy right-hand collar tie. You know, he, he sets this up you know, throughout the whole match. Keep on pushing that pace. You know, Will was, you know, coming for him on the edge of the mat, really made him make that mistake, like you said. It's proving you just got to out hustle your opponents when it counts. All right, capturing bronze for Team USA, Jacory Teamer and Gavin Hoffman. With four gold medals and a pair of bronze, the U.S. finished seven points back of Russia in the freestyle team race, followed by Azerbaijan and Iran. Our coverage of the Cadet World Championships continues. We go to the Greco Roma division. That's where Colton Schultz became the first American to win gold since 1997. Schultz squared off with Belint Vatsi of Hungary in the 100 kilo finals and scored the first points of the bout on passive. We go late into the second. Vatsi took the criteria lead on a step out, but Schultz pushed forward and snapped down the Hungarian for a go-behind takedown, sealing the 3-1 victory. All right, though Schultz was the only American to medal, the U.S. more than doubled its 2016 win total, picking up 11 total victories and a 10th place finish in Athens. Now, this is something that Lindland and the Greco program really can you know, hang their hat on. The, the senior world championships did not go very no. well, so the, a great junior finish. We got a, a a junior world champ. Now we got a cadet world champ. You know, there's some positive momentum now that they can go back to camp and say, hey, we need to put more focus, more focus, and more focus into the youth level program. Seems to be a lot of focus. 
Led by silver medalist Alara Boyd and Emily Shielson, the United States finished fifth in the women's freestyle division. Boyd battled Honoka Nakai from Japan and drew a first period passivity to go up by one. Though Nakai was unable to score any technical points, she forced a second period passivity and took the 1-1 victory on criteria. Meanwhile, Shilson fell to Japan's Umi Ito in the final round at 43. Ito hit a double leg off the opening whistle and went right back into a leg lace, securing three turns and a tech fall just 17 seconds into the bout. All right, this portion of our show brought to you by Fairway Food Stores. When we come back, we're talking NC State and Oklahoma State. You're going to want to hear what we have to say. This month at Casey's General Stores, try out our limited time only Philly cheesesteak pizza. And don't forget about our monthly pizza special. Two large single topping pizzas for just $20. Casey's, famous for pizza. I'm Don Beneveni, Beneveni Chevrolet and Granger. We recently made the switch to uh, LED lighting. Uh, we purchased it from uh, Yellow Blue. Uh, we've had a very good experience. The lighting has saved us approximately a thousand dollars a month. I made the switch to yellow blue LED lighting and you should too. Oklahoma State and NC State will be making NCAA history this upcoming collegiate season. In January, both programs will travel overseas to face off in Italy. It's the first time an NCAA duel will be held outside the continent of North America. The two teams will wrestle January 5th in Naples. Joining us now to discuss the historic matchup is NC State head coach Pat Papalizio. Pat, how did it happen that Naples would be the landing spot for these two squads? Uh, trying to work out getting the dual meet in the amphitheater. So that was uh, number one thing we we're trying to do and put it in a historic environment. And I think there's a lot of red roadblocks that we were running into. Um, so we reached out to the Naval base. And my brother was there this summer for uh, about a month, I think. Yeah, he brought his club team out there. So he checked around some different facilities. And right now the Naval base obviously fits that mold with having facilities and, you know, basically I think we're going to pack in the gym that we're already wrestling with, with everybody that's uh, stationed out there. So attendance is going to be pretty, pretty packed in. So hopefully we'll get some people traveling as well, but we already know that we're going to be able to pack the gym and that we're going to compete in. Wouldn't it be interesting as if this is successful and why wouldn't it be Oklahoma state and NC state, two very, uh, storied programs. Uh, we go back to Gaza with NC state and we go back with, the Smith family and all the dedication they've had to the Cowboys program. You, sir, yourself were a Cowboy once upon a time. I can understand why the two of you, John Smith and Pat Papalizio, are able to work so well together for uh, the opportunity to further the sport. And after all, that's what it's about, right? Visibility. I, I agree. You know, anytime we can get wrestling out in the front end of uh, media, I think it's good. Uh, we got to continue to grow, work it. It seems like a lot of people are being very creative on different things they're doing. Um, so I think it's it's good exposure for our sport at this time and, and making it more mainstream than ever right now. And uh, social media obviously has been helping a great deal. And, you know, just the people connected to the sport, I think it's in a, it's moving forward in the right direction. And you've got to be awful proud of that, Coach. NC State has finished in the top 10 in the final coaches' polls each of the past two years and will be returning a pair of All-Americans this year, led by a guy I love to watch wrestle, Kevin Jack at 141. How has he improved over the summer, your estimation? Uh, I think he's improved a lot. You know, he learned a lot from himself last year at the national tournament again, and we continue to work on some in areas of improvement that he knows he needs to do to win a national title. And, you know, that's his goal this year is to go out and compete. And there is probably as tough as competition as, as it's ever been. So he's excited for that challenge and will embrace it this year. Um, 
because it's not going to be an easy road. You know, no matter what weight you're at, there's going to be new guys coming up, stepping up to the plate, and guys returning that are as hungry as ever. So the challenge will be there, and he will be ready for it. Uh, but he's continued to make some strides uh, mentally and physically and technically, and it puts him in a dangerous spot because he is he's uh, very fun and uh, very good to watch wrestle. Much like Dan Gable, John Smith, and many others, you'll turn down all comers. In 2015, uh, Oklahoma State came to Raleigh and scored a 20 to 12 victory over the Wolfpack, but you went on the road and returned the favor the very following year. And there had to have been some um, some emotion attached to that 1915 victory in Stillwater. What were your thoughts? Uh, you know, I I got the most respect for Coach Smith, the program, anybody that's ever wrestled there, because I know what they've gone through to get to that level and the history and tradition. So when you're able to compete with programs like that, I mean, it's, it's satisfying to know that, you know, at least for that year, we were in position and in a place to, to be that competitive. So, you know, that, that it was a lot because I, I understand the history and tradition there. And, and so going back there and being able to compete with them, I think, you know, it elevated our program and, and instilled confidence, not only that year, but, with our program right now, I think it reassured a lot of things that we were doing, that we were doing it right and, uh, you know, challenging ourselves as far as different competitions we were able to to be in and, and fortunate enough to come away with a win there at Oklahoma State. Because anytime you wrestle a team like that, you do benefit, whether you're not winning and uh, you go there and you have a close match with them, you're, you're going to leave getting better because you were able to compete with the, one of the best teams in the country. So that was just a, overall, it was a great experience. It's one that you probably you know, you'll never, never forget and look back and know that it was, uh, it was a highlight, but there's life after that dual meet and we need to continue to, to improve so we can compete. And, uh, obviously we get to test ourselves again with, against them this year. Who is the home team at this, on this January 5th date? I think whoever has more Italian ties. So I'm going to say this <laughs> up. <laughs> oh man. I love you. Uh, Napoli, Italy, folks, you want to be there, get your chance to, uh, to visit Italy, take your tours and sample the food and beverage and the people of Italy. They are fine. January 5th tickets available soon. Look for more information online. Follow along at gopack.com. It's tussle for the troops in association with journeyman wrestling. It's Oklahoma state versus NC state, the wolf pack on the road internationally. I'm Scott Casper, our very special guest of the Nike Hot Seat today, Pat Papalizio. Pat, thank you so much. Same here. Appreciate having me. You know, first grapple on the gridiron, now this duel in Italy. I mean, John Smith is my man. I mean, this guy is making things happen. You know, I like these out-of-the-box thinking that these these coaches have, bringing in Pat Papalizio, a guy that has really taken NC State to here. You know, he's really done a lot of uh, exposure for the program. This is the next step in his, you know, his legacy as a coach. I, I just don't know where the money's coming from to travel him, but if basketball can do it, if football can do it, all these other sports, soccer, et cetera, can do it, why can't wrestling? And wrestling should be able to do it. Yeah, kudos to these athletic directors for making this happen. This is a fun trip for, you know, these, these student – Athletes, right. you know, headed into break. You know, Papa Papalizio, the head coach. You know, he was he was at Oklahoma State, former <laughs> Oklahoma State Cowboy, coming into going against his uh, his former coach. I guess pretty cool little story. And uh, both of these guys right now have a win in each column, and now you know best of three. All right, guess what, Tony? There is money in our sport. Find out more as we continue. It's Global Wrestling News brought to you by Adidas Wrestling. This month at Casey's General Stores, try out our limited time only Philly cheesesteak pizza. And don't forget about our monthly pizza special. Two large single topping pizzas for just $20. Casey's, famous for pizza. Wow, 40 years. Time really flies. Don't seem like it's been that long. It seemed like only yesterday that I started out route delivering it to the stores. For over 40 years, we're really proud to keep the same quality ingredients and not change our recipe. Help us celebrate our 40th anniversary by joining into our cookies recipe contest with a chance to win a Traeger Bronson 20 smoker. You can enter it on our Facebook page or cookiesbbq.com. Thanks for 40 years, and we'll see you in another 40 years. Cookie.
What's up guys, I wanna tell you about a new product that I am extremely excited about. It is the Pure and Clean Sports Skin Defense. It comes in a 16 ounce spray bottle and it comes in a little bitty travel size spray bottles. I have one of these, throw it in my bag, go straight to the gym. A lot of these gyms I train at, whether it be boxing, wrestling, kickboxing, grappling, strength and conditioning, it all has bacteria floating around, they all have viruses floating around, they all have fungus floating around, and the last thing you want is to get a fungus, a virus, get sick, any kind of, um, any kind of wounds that are gonna turn into any kind of uh, skin infections to take you off of the mat. Every single second that you spend off the mat or out of the gym is one second that you're wasting. So, Pure and Clean Sports came up with an amazing solution to give you the right amount of protection on your skin. You spray it right on your skin, Stay pure, stay clean, checking them out, pureandcleansports.com. All right, last week, the United States Wrestling Foundation launched a multi-city victory tour in celebration of the team's performance at the World Championships. The U.S. captured nine medals in Paris, while the men's freestyle team brought home a team title, the first in 22 years. Talk about being part of a World Championship team. I mean, that hasn't happened for us since... My birthday, 1995. Yeah, that's what yeah think about remember. it, man. That's 22 years, right? Uh, yeah, it's, it's been it's been great. It's, uh, it's just uh, to think about it if, uh, with the people on it. You know, that makes it even more amazing. But you know, when you wake up every day and you're just like, wow, you know, like I was a part of that. You know, like we were a part of that. And um, it's an honor. You know, it's, it's definitely an honor. I, I couldn't be more proud um, to be a part of not only such a great team, but a great program and to represent such a great country and uh, bring back home, you know, the ultimate prize, that team prize um, is, is amazing. You know, it's fun to go around and tell people we've made America the, the greatest wrestling country in the world, you know, so and we and I look forward to doing it more in the future. So uh, I'm sure you weren't satisfied with bronze. You oh, always no. want to win. But talk about coming back. Yeah, you struggled a bit, but you came back when it counted at the end. Yeah, you know, um, I think one thing is people should take away is like, uh, I'm very proud. I'm always proud of my accomplishments, no matter what they are. You know, if bronze is bronze, I'm proud of that accomplishment. I'm really happy that I got that. Um, but the thing is, I'm not satisfied with that. And right. so I'm working my, my behind off, my butt off, to, you know, to, to make sure that the next time I go around that I'm, I'm coming out with a different color medal. I'm coming out with a gold one. Um, that's definitely what my, my goal is. Um, nothing less. Uh, I've done great things. I've got to be a part of great things. And getting bronze is, you know, it's no easy task. And it's, and it's uh, getting any medal is no easy task, you know. But uh, I definitely think that I'm up for and, and I'm willing and I'm, I'm capable of going and, and doing better and, and definitely getting a gold medal in, in Worlds and in the Olympics. So um, I'm really looking forward to those opportunities. Um, but, you know, first, you got to take care of business first and make those teams. And uh, oh, absolutely. I look forward to doing that as well. Um, anything, um, your thoughts about the Living the Dream Fund? You're going to get a a check here and be recognized with that program. Uh, two years in a row you've earned some bonus money. Just about the people that have helped support you through that. I mean, uh, you know, it's just, I think it's people, it's nice always to be, you know, recognized for your, how do I say this, your, your accomplishments. It's nice right. for people to, you know, to see that, you know, you've done something great. Um, but really what's really nice is that this, you know, people don't realize that this money is like, uh, it helps us to go and, you know, help our families out and do things like that or, you know, helps us prepare ourselves for, our, you know, our lives. And it's, it's nice to, don't me wrong, it's nice to collect a little bit of coin for the things that we have to go through, you know. Absolutely. The cutting away, the travel, the away time from family, away from friends, um, not a lot of free time, training, just, you know, we, we do a lot. And so um, I definitely think that it's well-deserved, but, I, you know, it's, it's not a... It's not a well deserved without us being, you know, we're extremely grateful for what we what we get. I'm extremely grateful for this. Um, I believe it's something that I've earned. I believe other people believe it's something that we've earned as well. So, I mean, it's, it's amazing, and I'm grateful for it, and um, I'll forever be grateful for it. It's awesome. You guys enjoy this kind of thing where the wrestling people get together and kind of celebrate our team and what's going on with the American program? It's, it's kind of a different deal, you know? Get a chance to dress up and meet some new people, right? Yeah, the support and everything is awesome. You also are going to get your living the dream checks tonight, uh, Ali. Two years, two years in a row. I mean, talk about the program as an athlete. What it means to have people raise money to support what you're doing. It, I mean, every every little bit helps. You know, we do this for like the love and passion of the sport, and then that money just helps so much to support our dreams to be able for us to live. And you know, we don't get paid much outside of this, so really getting something for your achievements is awesome. All right, the best part of this, Tony, is that wrestlers are getting paid. 
We've not taken care of our athletes in the past, and that's a big part of the reason why we've fallen behind. Yeah, this is why we're keeping guys like Jordan Burroughs around, Kyle Snyder. He's still in college. But these are these are what's going to keep guys in our sport, not transition to MMA, not going to go out on the coaching. They know they can make a quarter million dollars by winning the Olympics. They're going to try to see, th see that out for a good Olympic cycle there. All right, we've got to take a quick timeout. Quick Hits is next. You're watching Global Wrestling News, thanks to Pure and Clean Sport. The war raged for generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defend so, defend what you have built. Well, the news is out of New Jersey. Good news indeed for Rutgers. Nick Suriano has been granted a waiver and will be eligible to compete immediately. Unfortunately, three-time All-American Anthony Ashnell will not. The Scarlet Knight senior was injured while training for the University of Nationals and will be sidelined until at least December. And yeah, Rutgers' schedule is really, really backloaded with Iowa, Penn State, Ohio State, Minnesota. Hammers. Now, these are all in December and January, so this really shouldn't be a huge problem for the Rutgers. All right, but you can't overstate how important National it is to the lineup. That's a lot of wins and a lot of bonus points that they're going to have to get from somebody else. Who steps up? Well, I mean, they're going to they're going to struggle at the beginning of the season, but they've got they're so heavy loaded at the the lower weights that those guys should roll in and get get bonus points for them in a lot of duels. You know, I think uh, you know not pushing him, not pushing at this time, really sending it off is is important for him and their team to realize that they're going to get him back in the summer. All right, let's talk coaching moves. Four-time All-American Mike McMullen leaves Penn and is back at his alma mater as an assistant coach. McMullen was a national runner-up and Big Ten champ for Northwestern and spent last season working with the upper weights at Penn. Who knows the program better than this guy, Tony? This is a great hire. Well, Mike represents Northwestern. It'd be weird to see that guy in an ugly sweater in a different color. You know, coming him back to Northwestern, that old-school sweater that you know, my dad's or grandpa's wear. I think it's hilarious. Um, you know, but Northwestern, this is a, to bring him back for upper weights. They got Brewer. They got Joey Dance, the RTC. Um, and, and then just really kind of, and Andrew Howe there. <laughs> it's crazy the, the amount of talent they have in this room. We didn't know how things were going to transition with Storniello into the program. And he's doing a really good job of getting the people that he really respects back in his program. All right, news out of Stillwater. Oklahoma State is doing the same thing. The Cowboys just announced the elevation of Chris Perry to assistant coach. Another former Cowboy, Tyler Caldwell, will take over as recruiting coordinator, while Wisconsin's Isaac Jordan has been hired as a volunteer assistant. This has got to be the youngest coaching staff in the country. And John Smith is cleaning house. Or he's bringing in new new blood. I mean, I do think that, you know, hasn't been out there, but I do feel like John Smith had some kind of play in maybe pushing Guerrero out. I don't know if Guerrero left like everyone thinks that happened. I don't know. Just a hunch. But, uh, you know, this is, a, this is an opportunity for these coaches to take over what John Smith built. You know, he's at some point he's going to want to step away. They're not, he's not going to get forced out probably ever. 
So these guys have this opportunity to get lifted up within the program and be the Okie State's next next head coach. Isaac Jordan, though, leaving Wisconsin, I'm surprised that Barry wasn't able to keep him. This is one of the top wrestlers in school history, and you just can't let a guy like that slip out the back door. Yeah, I mean, he is such a funky guy on top. You cannot teach guys how to ride like Isaac Jordan did at Wisconsin. You know, it's, it's important to have, in, in today's world, these kids are learning all this funk, and to let a guy like that out of your program, you don't know what you know is wrapped up in, in coaching contracts. So, I mean, it doesn't surprise me that he's gone the way that things are rolling, but kudos to them for going out and getting him to come. All right, another former Oklahoma State wrestler has been cleared to compete for Lockhaven. Following a series of issues off the mat, Chance Marsteller was originally going to have to sit out until January, but that step has been lifted, allowing the four-time Pennsylvania State champ to start for the Eagles at 165. Yeah, look, I mean, people will do about anything to get a potential All-American to transfer in. You know, it's a big, big risk in my eyes. You know, I think Iowa's taking a big risk to bring Downey in. He's got to do a few things to, to make that right. So I think um, you want to get these guys in, but it's a huge risk. And it's a risk that you're probably willing to take because these two guys could be on the stand Saturday in March. All right, well, you have a really forgiving culture, but you only get so many opportunities. I have a feeling this is the last one for Marsteller, and I'm hopefully he'll make the most of it. We're out of time for this week, Tony. For all of us at Takedown Studios in Des Moines, Iowa, I'm Scott Casper. We'll see you next week right here for Global Wrestling News. Have a good week, everybody.